Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Trades are a pretty common occurrence within the National Hockey League, and while most deals are decided between two different teams, some moves require the help of a third party too. Now while multi-team trades have become far more popular in recent years, they're still pretty rare compared to their two team counterparts. In fact, of the hundreds of trades throughout NHL history, only 15 of them have involved three teams, five of which have taken place within the last three years alone. But when did the first multi-team trade take place? Who were the teams involved in the deal, and how did it pan out in the many years that followed? Well let's dive back into the history books and take a look, shall we? So in today's video, join me as we explore the first three-team trade in NHL history. Now in order to learn more about this historic deal, allow me to take you back to June of 1991. The NHL was entering its 75th year of existence, the San Jose Sharks were the league's latest expansion team, and the Great One was rewriting the record books in sunny California. Several weeks after the league held a dispersal and expansion draft on May 30th, the NHL began its 1991 entry draft on June 22nd. During this event, three franchises got together and made the first multi-team trade in NHL history. And what was the trade? Well, the contents of the deal was as follows. The New York Islanders traded defenseman Craig Ludwig to the Minnesota North Stars. The North Stars sent defenseman Dave Babich to the Vancouver Canucks, while Vancouver shipped off defenseman Tom Curvers to the Islanders too. Talk about defenseman musical chairs, eh, folks? So who were each of these players, and why were they involved in this deal? Well, let's look at each of their careers before the trade took place, and see what led them to be included in this historic deal. A third round pick in the 1980 draft by the Montreal Canadiens, Craig Ludwig spent the first eight years of his NHL career with the Habs, had potted 137 points in 597 games during that span, and had even won the 1986 Stanley Cup as a member of the organization. Thanks to a trade to the New York Islanders on September 4th, 1990, the American defenseman had spent the recent 1991 season on Long Island, where he potted 9 points and racked up 77 penalty minutes in 75 regular season games. The second overall pick of the 1980 NHL draft by the original Winnipeg Jets, Dave Babich had played 739 games over parts of 11 seasons and had scored 561 points at the time of the trade. During the 1991 season though, the defenseman had only played 8 games with the Hartford Whalers, but he was able to score 6 points during that span before injury sidelined him for the rest of the year. That said, Babbage had spent 5.5 seasons with the Whalers organisation and had potted 240 points in 349 games with the team before being taken by the North Stars during the 1991 expansion draft. A 7th round pick in 1981 by Montreal, Tom Curvers had spent 7 seasons in the show, had suited up for a handful of teams in the process, and had potted 280 points in 445 NHL games during that span. Thanks to a trade to Vancouver on January 12th, 1991, the American defenseman spent the rest of the 1991 season with the Canucks, and scored 27 points in 32 games with his new team. So the first three-team trade in NHL history saw the North Stars acquire a hard-nosed, no-nonsense defenseman, the Canucks pick up a high-scoring, yet recently injured blue liner, and the Islanders receive a productive journeyman for their back end. As far as NHL trades go, these teams certainly could have done a lot worse for themselves, you know. So how did this deal pan out? Would each player live up to their new team's expectations, or would some sides fare better than others? Well... Having been traded to Minnesota, Craig Ludwig would spend the next eight seasons of his career with the North Stars Dallas Stars organization, where he would score 76 points and register 741 penalty minutes in 584 regular season games during that span. If that wasn't impressive enough though, the defenseman would also help the team reach the promised land, as his five points in 23 games during the 1999 playoffs helped Dallas clinch their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Not bad for a guy who scored just 8 points that season, eh folks? Having helped Dallas lift their first championship in franchise history, and having added another ring to his collection, Ludwig would hang up his skates and retire from the sport shortly after the postseason came to an end. Getting 8 years of strong play and a steady presence during your cup run sounds like a pretty good return if you ask me. So good job, Minnesota! 
Following his trade to Vancouver, Dave Babbage would spend the next six seasons of his career with the Canucks, and though he would become a fan favourite during his tenure with the organisation, he would struggle to reach his productive play of years past. Thanks to the numerous injuries he had suffered both before and during his tenure in Vancouver, the defenseman would register 154 points in 409 games with the team and would crack 30 points just once during that span. That said, Babbage would show flashes of his former self during his time with the Canucks, and he was always known more for his defensive play than he was for his goal scoring, so he still provided plenty of value for his new team. After potting 9 points in his first 47 games of the 97-98 season, Babbage would be traded to the Philadelphia Flyers midway through the year. From there, the veteran defenseman would spend a season and a half with a pair of NHL teams, play a handful of games and produce minimal scoring numbers during that span, before retiring from the league for good after the 98-99 season. He may not have performed as well as Vancouver might have liked, but given that he spent over half a decade with the organisation, he became a local legend in the process, and he showed glimpses of his past play throughout this time, Vancouver could have done better, but they certainly could have done a lot worse. Once he had been traded to New York, Tom Curvers spent the next three seasons within the Islanders organisation, and he continued to perform at a similar level to years past, as he notched 134 points in 192 games with the team. After leaving Long Island behind once the 93-94 season concluded, Curvers played one more season in the NHL and spent the following year over in Japan before retiring from the sport at the conclusion of the 95-96 season. So the Minnesota North Stars received the least productive player in this deal, but the longest tenured of the three who helped them lift their first championship, the Vancouver Canucks received a fan favourite who played well for the team, but he never returned to his past form, while the Islanders acquired the shortest tenured player of the group, but he was the most productive of the three during that span. Now you could probably make a case for why all three of these teams won this trade, but I would argue that it was pretty even for every side involved. Sure, Minnesota got the longest tenured player, Vancouver got a local legend, and New York acquired the most productive asset, but considering that they all made a solid impact for their respective teams, I don't think you can say that one side did significantly better than the other two teams involved. After all, it's not as if any of these players were bona fide superstars, or they lit the league on fire after they were traded. They each produced respectable performances for their new team, Teams in the many years that followed. Sounds like a pretty fair deal if you ask me. Could this trade have turned out better? Sure, probably. Was it the best deal in NHL history? Definitely not. But does it hold a unique place in the league's record books? Yes. Yes, it does. And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That was a look at the first three-team trade in NHL history. What do you guys think about this historic deal? Do you think that each team received fair value in the trade, or did some sides fare better than others? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Clayton Hallam, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.